This is Plant-Based Briefing, The Philosophy of Animal Rights, Part 1, by Tom Reagan at all-creatures.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. This is the Plant-Based Podcast, where I curate, get permission, and narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's article is longer, so it's a two-parter. I'm reading Part 1 today, and I'll read Part 2 tomorrow. It's written by Tom Reagan, an American philosopher who passed away in 2017. He specialized in animal rights theory and was a professor emeritus of philosophy at North Carolina State University. And he was author of numerous books on the philosophy of animal rights, including The Case for Animal Rights. And one thing to note is this article was written in 2008. So keep in mind that when he talks about some science about the sentience of animals, some of that science has been updated since this article was written. For example, shrimp are regarded now as sentient. So just keep that in mind. And this article is posted at all-creatures.org. I'm so happy to have permission to share their content. They curate a variety of really good content, and they also have a resource called What to Eat When You Don't Eat Animals, Menus and Ideas to Inspire People Who Want to Eat As If Life is Precious. It's a free PDF that's great to share with people who really don't even know what's available to them in grocery stores or at restaurants if they want to eat a vegan diet. So check that out. That's linked in the show notes as well. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. The Philosophy of Animal Rights, Part 1, by Tom Reagan at all-creatures.org. The other animals humans eat, use in science, hunt, trap, and exploit in a variety of ways have a life of their own that is of importance to them, apart from their utility to us. They are not only in the world, they are aware of it. What happens to them matters to them. Each has a life that fares better or worse for the one whose life it is. That life includes a variety of biological, individual, and social needs. The satisfaction of these needs is a source of pleasure, their frustration or abuse a source of pain. In these fundamental ways, the non-human animals in labs and on farms, for example, are the same as human beings. And so it is that the ethics of our dealings with them and with one another must acknowledge the same fundamental moral principles. At its deepest level, human ethics is based on the independent value of the individual. The moral worth of any one human being is not to be measured by how useful that person is in advancing the interest of other human beings. To treat human beings in ways that do not honor their independent value is to violate that most basic of human rights, the right of each person to be treated with respect. The philosophy of animal rights demands only that logic be respected. For any argument that plausibly explains the independent value of human beings implies that other animals have this same value— and have it equally. And any argument that plausibly explains the right of humans to be treated with respect also implies that these other animals have this same right, and have it equally too. It is true, therefore, that women do not exist to serve men, blacks to serve whites, the poor to serve the rich, or the weak to serve the strong. The philosophy of animal rights not only accepts these truths, it insists upon and justifies them. But this philosophy goes further— By insisting upon and justifying the independent value and rights of other animals, it gives scientifically informed and morally impartial reasons for denying that these animals exist to serve us. Once this truth is acknowledged, it is easy to understand why the philosophy of animal rights is uncompromising in its response to each and every injustice other animals are made to suffer. It is not larger, cleaner cages that justice demands in the case of animals used in science, for example, but empty cages— Not, quote-unquote, traditional animal agriculture, but a complete end to all commerce in the flesh of dead animals. Not more humane hunting and trapping, but the total eradication of these barbarous practices. For when an injustice is absolute, one must oppose it absolutely. It was not reformed slavery that justice demanded, not reformed child labor, not reformed subjugation of women— In each of these cases, abolition was the only moral answer. Merely to reform injustice is to prolong injustice. The philosophy of animal rights demands the same answer, abolition, in response to the unjust exploitation of other animals. It is not the details of unjust exploitation that must be changed. It is the unjust exploitation itself that must be ended, whether on the farm, in the lab, or among the wild, for example. 
The philosophy of animal rights asks for nothing more, but neither will it be satisfied with anything less. 10 Reasons for Animal Rights Number 1. The philosophy of animal rights is rational. Explanation. It is not rational to discriminate arbitrarily, and discrimination against non-human animals is arbitrary. It is wrong to treat weaker human beings, especially those who are lacking in normal human intelligence, as tools or renewable resources or models or commodities. It cannot be right, therefore, to treat other animals as if they were tools, models, and the like. If their psychology is as rich as or richer than these humans, to think otherwise is irrational. Quote, to describe an animal as a physical-chemical system of extreme complexity is no doubt perfectly correct, except that it misses out on the animalness of the animal. Unquote. E. F. Schumacher. Number two. You are saying that every human and every other animal has the same rights, which is absurd. Chickens cannot have the right to vote, nor can pigs have a right to a higher education. Reply, we are not saying that humans and other animals always have the same rights. Not even all human beings have the same rights. For example, people with serious mental disadvantages do not have a right to higher education. What we are saying is that these and other humans share a basic moral right with other animals, namely the right to be treated with respect. Quote, it is the fate of every truth to be an object of ridicule when it is first acclaimed, unquote. Albert Schweitzer. Number three, if animals have rights, then so do vegetables, which is absurd. Reply, many animals are like us. They have a psychological welfare of their own. Like us, therefore, these animals have a right to be treated with respect. On the other hand, we have no reason, and certainly no scientific one, to believe that carrots and tomatoes, for example, bring a psychological presence to the world. Like all other vegetables, carrots and tomatoes lack anything resembling a brain or central nervous system. Because they are deficient in these respects, there is no reason to think of vegetables as psychological beings, with the capacity to experience pleasure and pain, for example. It is for these reasons that one can rationally affirm rights in the case of animals and deny them in the case of vegetables. Quote, the case for animal rights depends only on the need for sentiency, unquote. Reverend Andrew Lindsay. You just listened to The Philosophy of Animal Rights, Part 1, by Tom Reagan at all-creatures.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Tune in tomorrow for the second half of this article, and please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.